So I have this much left. Can I finish this bag? Let's find out. Okay, so here we are. I've finished this round here and I've actually done a couple of rounds and then un undid it. So the reason why the shape looks this way is because I've got the bag now folded in half. So if I opened it this way, you can see that this is the bottom of the bag. And so this is where our first little spine of our rectangle is. And so our long sides are here and our short sides are here. So you can see that where we stopped increasing, it's, whoops, it's out of the frame here. Where we stopped increasing, it naturally creates a corner to the bottom of our bag. So if I just pull this apart like that, hopefully you can see, see, it just wants to create its own corner. So that's how I came to this fold point. So this is the spine. So all I did was I took the two corners and I folded them together. So the bottom of my bag is folded in half. And so now you can truly see the depth of my bag here, okay? So we just completed round 51 from the very beginning to the end or uh, round 31 if you're counting from where we stopped increasing. So now what I wanna do is I wanna kind of figure out where to marker my handles. And so I initially did it where I was gonna focus on having the four corners of the bag. and But then I realized that this bag, because it is so slouchy, it's not holding its structure. And so the, the handles ended up being very, very tiny. And again, this is what I wanna avoid. It was the boo-boo I made with the first laundry bag. So. I've decided we're going to lay this flat and uh, divvy it up as if the bag is being split in half along the long side. So now, what do I know for sure? I know that I have 320 stitches all the way around. Again, if you have 319 or 321, don't worry about it. The main thing is that you're gonna fold your bag in half so that you can find your end points. And then what you wanna try and do is take the number of stitches and divide it by three. Now, 320 stitches all the way around. So, sorry, let me back up here. So I have 320 stitches all the way around. When I divide that in half, I have 160 stitches on each side. In order to find a nice placement that's gonna work for me for my handles, I'm gonna take that 160 and divide it by three, give or take. Now, 160 does not divide evenly by three. So let's say you had 150 just to make it even. We know that divide that by three, it's 50 stitches for each section because we wanna divide this into three sections. But because I have 160, that means I have an extra 10 stitches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to count from the edge here inward 50 stitches and I'm gonna add two. So I'm gonna have 52 stitches here and I'm gonna put a stitch marker, which you can see that I have done. And then I'm gonna go to the other end and count 52 stitches in from there and put a stitch marker there, which I have. So this will leave me with 56 stitches in the center. Now, if you're following along like me, you don't even need to worry about this. You're just gonna count exactly as I tell you. But I always like to offer the option for those that want to make adjustments on their own, whether you wanna make your bag a little larger or even a little smaller. I like to explain my method so that you have the freedom to kind of adjust the project to your liking. So I have stitch markers now here and my middle section has 56 stitches. So then I do the same thing on the other side. So I've got a stitch marker here and a stitch marker here. This center section is the section that I will use to then create my handles. 
So what we want to do now for round 51 is you can see that the bag is kind of stretching out this way and because and because I actually want it to kind of hold stuff in, I don't want it stretching outward. So we're going to just do a little bit of a decrease round just to start kind of shaping it a little inward. This bag does have a lot of stretch to it, so if we can help it by creating a little shaping inward, I think that'll be great. So that's what we're going to do for round 52 using single crochet stitches. And from there, we are going to then shape our handles. And this is all I've got left. So I'm really hoping that I have enough to finish this bag. And this will have taken me two full skeins of the um, of those large uh, handicrafter skeins. So here's hoping. Let's get to it. Okay, so this is where I had slip stitch to join my previous round, which was around number 51. And so I'm just going to look here. So this is where my first stitch marker is to create my handle. So what we're going to do is, oops, and I should n mention that this is where I folded the bag in half. So I know that this is leading into my handle area. So from here to this stitch marker, we are going to place a decrease stitch into every fifth stitch. So it's just starting to help us create a little bit of, of shaping inward. So we're gonna chain one, and we're just using single crochets here. So we're gonna go into this very next stitch here, and we're gonna place a single crochet, and we're gonna place five of these. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, and now this is the fifth one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stitch the fifth and the sixth one together. So this is gonna decrease the number of stitches. So I pull up my loop, but I do not resolve. And then I go into the next one and pull up another loop. So you have three loops on the hook, and then you yarn over and pull through all three. And for those of you that are a little newer, that's how you decrease two stitches into one. So I'm going to repeat this all the way until that stitch marker. So I will now do five single crochets, or sorry, I will do four. So this is two, three, and four. And then into the fifth, I will decrease. So here's the fifth, and then I take the next one, and I decrease okay so you won't notice it just yet but once we go around the whole bag you'll notice that it'll start to shape inwards so you're going to repeat this all the way until you get to that very first stitch marker and then I'm going to take you through what we're going to do between the stitch markers which will be just slightly different Okay, so I've just come up to my first stitch marker and I just did a decrease and I have one stitch left, so no big deal. I'm just gonna place one single crochet there, okay? And so it's very subtle, but if you run your hand along there, you can feel that it's, it's starting to kind of crunch inward, okay? So now our first stitch marker indicates this is where we will eventually place our handle. But right now I do also want to crunch in the space between the two handles um, just to give it a little bit more support for when we place our items in the bag. So what we're gonna do here, we are gonna do more decreases. I'm just gonna take this stitch marker out for a moment. And we are now going to decrease into every second stitch. So that means we will do one single crochet. And before I forget, I'm just gonna replace my stitch marker there just to keep it consistent. So there's one single crochet and now I'm gonna decrease the next two. So I bring these two together. Okay, so one single crochet and then a decrease. So we just slightly changed the pattern a little bit, but we are continuing to work to decrease the opening of our bag to give it a little bit more shape. So do that all the way 
until you get to the next stitch marker. Okay, so I have that last stitch between the stitch marker. Okay, so I now have 37 stitches from this stitch marker, so including this stitch, all the way up until this finished one. So 37 stitches, and I am gonna include the marked stitch. So my handles will always include the marked stitch. So that's gonna give me 38 stitches. So I'm just gonna put another stitch here. So we went from 56 to 38 stitches. Okay, now, so actually let me do this so you can see. So it's again, very subtle, but it's starting, see how it's starting to ripple? It's because we've decreased our stitches, so it's giving it an opportunity to shape inwards, which is what we want. And now we're moving along towards the bend or the fold all the way around to the other side where you're gonna meet your first stitch marker for your handle. So now we're gonna go here here and around the bend. And so we're gonna go back to the first method of decreasing, which is to decrease into every fifth stitch. So just what we did earlier on. So nice and easy, we count one, two, three, four, and then we decrease number five and number six, okay? So just to recap, because now I'm gonna set you loose to finish the rest of this round. We began here where our bag folded on the side. So we did four single crochets and decreased five and six together. We repeated that all the way until our stitch marker. From this stitch marker to this one, this is where our handles are gonna be. We did a decrease in every second stitch. So we did one single crochet decrease, one single crochet decrease all the way here. And then now we're picking back up and we're repeating a decrease into every fifth stitch. You will go all the way around your bag until you get to the other side where your other stitch markers are right here. So this is where the other side, where your other handle is going to be and then you will decrease into every second stitch, okay? Once you're finished there, we're now finishing up the long side here, and you go back to decreasing into every fifth stitch, and that should bring you all the way back to the beginning here, and that's where I will meet up with you. So there you will have completed round 52. Okay, so I finished this round and now in between my handle spots, including the stitch markers, I have 38 stitches. Now, this is just for those if you really wanna know the exact stitch count, because at this point, you are just wanting to make sure everything is set up evenly. So if you end up having 37 or 39, don't worry about it. As long as they're the same on each side, you're great. And then around the long side, coming to the other stitch marker for the other handle, I have 78 stitches. So this is between the stitch markers, so it does not include the stitch marker. Where I have the handles, it's 38 stitches, including these stitch markers. So we're gonna do uh, another round where now we are going to start to actually shape the handles or the strap to go over your shoulders. So I'm gonna pick up where I left off here, which is right here. So this is in the middle of a long side. So we are gonna do another little bit of decreasing stitches here. And so we've got our chain one. And so we're gonna go into that first stitch and single crochet. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna decrease into every fourth stitch. So this is one, and two, and three. And now this is the fourth stitch. So I'm gonna decrease these two together, the fourth and the fifth. And I'm just doing another round on this side of gentle decreasing again, just to create a little bit more shape inwards. So that's what I'm gonna do until I get to 
the first stitch marker of my first handle. So go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna talk about shaping that first arch for our handle. Okay, so I just finished my last decrease and I have one stitch left, no big deal. I'm just gonna go into there, do a single crochet, and now I've come up to that first stitch marker. So now what we're gonna do is we are gonna create a set of chains that is going to create the shape of our strap here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this marker out and I'm gonna single crochet into it. So single crochet. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to chain 60 chains. Now be careful here not to chain too tightly because we are gonna have to work back into these chains later to create the width of our strap. Okay, so I have finished my 60 chains and this is a good time to kind of lay your bag down. And so the idea is that you are going to then reattach to where that other stitch marker is. Now, 60 chains is what I chained for the other laundry bag that I did. And for you, you might think, well, that's that's quite a bit. Um, remember, there's gonna be stretch, and when you fill this with laundry, you want a nice kind of um, wide opening to get your arm through and to put it over your shoulder. Now, I am just feeling because this bag is larger than the last bag I did a few years back, I think I'm going to add about 10, maybe 20 more chains. And this is where you can adjust this to how you like it. So this is a good time to do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and do another 10 chains. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine and 10. So that means I would have 70 and then I'm just gonna see how I like it. And again, it will stretch. I think I'm gonna add 10 more just to be on the safe side. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and 10. 10. So now I have a total of 80 chains. And I like doing this kind of stuff with you guys so that you can see that, you know, you can adjust things as you go. And yeah, that's looking a bit better for me. Even though I know it will stretch a bit and become a little bit longer, but I like this idea. So 80 chains is what I'm going to do to create that initial strap shape. Now here's where you want to be careful. So where I start of the chain, see that? I wanna make sure it doesn't get twisted, really important. So I'm just gonna make sure it's nice and flat to where I did the stitch, there we go. So that's the beginning of it, or that's the top of the stitch. And I'm just gonna follow it along, making sure that top face of the stitch, that means the Vs are all facing me and they're not twisting. Okay, I'm gonna follow it along there, perfect. This is where I'm gonna put my hook in. And now I'm gonna pick up right where that other stitch marker is, and I'm gonna insert my hook so I don't lose my spot. I'm gonna take out this stitch marker because we don't need it anymore. And I am going to single crochet into this. So I'm just gonna pick up a loop, whoops and a single crochet. Now, some of you might want a slip stitch. I like the idea of the single crochet because then I can continue on my way here. So now I've officially created my very first strap, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue on with those decreases I was doing along the around the long side, I call it, which is just the side between where the handles end and then begin the next one. So again, I'm going to begin by decreasing into every fourth stitch. I'm not going to count this one because this is where the stitch marker was. So I'm going to single crochet one, two, three, and then I'm going to decrease the fourth and the fifth stitch. Okay, so you know the drill. So that's what I'm going to do all the way around. And then when I get to that next stitch marker, I'm going to chain 80 
and then reattach with a single crochet to the other side. And then you won't need stitch markers anymore. And then continue with those decreases until I get back to the beginning where I started the decreases, which is right here. And in fact, it would probably be a good idea just to be on the safe side because these are shallow stitches, just to put a little stitch marker there. Okay, so go ahead and do this round and then I'm gonna meet up with you at the end. So we will now be completing round 53. Okay, so go ahead and do that. And then the rest of the rounds are gonna be pretty easy. It's just a matter of giving our strap some girth and our bag is almost complete. Okay, so here we go. We've got the two handles done. You can see these sides are shaping in nicely. So now in between the two handles around the long side, I now have 71 stitches. So on each side, um, between where the handles end and begin. There should be still 38 stitches between each side of each handle. Again, it's not super important at this point for the exact stitch count, but I just like to kind of specify my stitch count, most especially because once I do the written pattern, I will have a specific stitch count. It's just a nice guide. As always, if you have one or two more or less, it's not a big deal for a project like this. So now we're just gonna continue on for one more round to finish this off before we start shaping our the inside of our handle. And so I'm just going to chain one. We're gonna stick with these single crochets and then I'm going to just single crochet one into every single stitch, okay? And then when you get up to your first handle, I'll just meet up with you there and show you how I'm going to go into the stitch. So there's a couple of different ways you can do it. So one single crochet into each stitch so far. Okay, so I'm coming up to this first side of the handle. And so this is my last stitch here. So I'm gonna single crochet here. And now I'm going to single crochet into each and every single chain stitch. And so the next stitch would be right here. That's that first chain. So most people would go in through the top of the V, which you totally can do. I'm gonna try something a little different. I'm gonna try and go in through uh, the back bumps, but I want the Vs to stay facing forward. So. I'm gonna try and go under like a regular stitch. So this one is easy because it's still kind of attached to a stitch. So as long as those two Vs are still on top of the hook, this one's a little tight. There we go. And I'm just gonna single crochet. Okay, and that's gonna give us a nice sense of continuity up through the handle. So again, now I'm gonna go into the next chain. So see, those are the Vs. I'm gonna try and just go under here and get my hook to go in. So the idea is to pick up that back bump. So what you could do is turn it over and help your hook through there, but then make sure you're pulling it through that way. And that just gives you a little, a little bit more something to hang on to uh, when working through the stitch. Then when we work on the inside, these back bumps will be kind of pushed forward a little bit more and it'll make it a little easier to pick up. It'll also make this strap just have a little bit more girth to it. Um, so I'm gonna continue doing that through the back bump. You absolutely can just go in through the front. It's gonna make life a lot easier. So I'm just gonna do a few here, just so you can see. So it's much easier to go through and you can see it's just creating a little bit of a stretch of the stitch. So then when we come back around, we would go into the same stitch and just sometimes it creates a little bit of a stretch, which I'm trying to avoid for this particular project, but it is not a big deal in any way, shape, or form. It's just something I'm trying. So that's it. That's all. You're going to continue on single crochet into each chain all the way until you get to here. 
and then you continue on around the bag to the next handle and all the way around. So this is the finishing round of the outside edge of the bag, one single crochet into each stitch, and then we're gonna be ready to do the inside edges of the handles, create a little bit more shaping. So go ahead and do that, and I will meet, meet you back here in a little bit. Okay, so this is what I have left, getting right down to the wire. So I have gone ahead and done one of the handles just so you can see what it's gonna look like. So now I worked with inside the handle and I've done two rounds of single crochets. See how lovely that looks now that we're working on the inside. And so I did, in the first round, I did a decrease in every second stitch. And then in the third round, I did no decreases. I just did a finishing round. So you get a little bit of that gathered in look. Again, it's just to create shape and um, we're ready to rock. At the end, I am gonna do a finishing round inside the handles and outside with just a slip stitch round. And the reason why I do that is because slip stitches sit tighter and it's just gonna give it a little bit of uh, extra strength, especially for something like handles. Now, if I don't have enough, which I probably might not, I might, um, what I'll do is I will buy one of those uh, smaller skeins, like I know the Handicrafter Cotton, um, if they're still in existence, they used to come in smaller skeins of like 50 grams, and uh, I would probably just get one of those to do the finishing round. If I can't find some other scrap uh, cotton yarn lying around. Again, this is for a laundry bag, so I'm not too particular about, you know, colorways and things like that. Like, I'm pretty happy with the fact that I got through most of the bag with the same colorway of yarn. So I think anything that might be a contrasting color, for example, would just add a nice little finishing touch. But anyway, we'll get to that uh, if and when we come to it. So I'm going to show you how I created this handle in the second side here. So the second side, this is where I've left you guys, where we've just done one row of single crochets all the way around and we were going into both of the top loops. So when you turn this over, you're just gonna see the bumps there being exposed. So this is what I'm gonna show you how to do and how to finish off quite nicely. Now what I would recommend is to get a slightly smaller hook as we work our way in through this edge here because it does get a little bit snug. So I am gonna grab my four millimeter hook and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got my four millimeter hook here and this is what I'm gonna use just for that little first round as we go along through the underside of the handle. But for now, I'm gonna pick up my regular hook and I'm gonna start just one stitch in from the end here of where that handle begins. So the handle is here. So we've got the first stitch. I'm gonna start here in this second stitch. So I'm just gonna grab my yarn and I'm not gonna place a slip knot here. I am just going to insert my hook and then just pull a loop through. I like to do that sometimes so that we don't have too much bulk. And then I'm gonna chain one. Okay, now we've secured that there. I'll work over that tail. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go back into that same stitch and I'm gonna single crochet. Just like that. Now, I'm going to decrease the next two stitches together. So I will insert and then insert into the next one. I'm trying to work over that tail as well and then pull through. So pretty straightforward. Uh, you're gonna go into the next stitch and do a single crochet, and then you're gonna decrease the next two together. So you're just alternating between a regular single crochet and a decrease stitch, okay? So you're gonna do that all the way to the end, then I'm gonna meet up with you when you're just about ready to go into that last stitch. So don't work into that. Just stop once you get here and I'm gonna take you through how we're gonna come around this little bend here. Okay. 
Okay, I've just done a single crochet, and normally I would single crochet the next two together, but because I'm gonna do a decrease around the bend here, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna do a regular single crochet there. So, you know, this bag, you just adjust things as you go along. And now what we're gonna do is we are gonna decrease three stitches together. So I'm gonna insert into the next stitch, the stitch that's at the bend, and then the stitch following the bend. So I'm gonna insert there, pull up one loop, insert into the next one, pull up another loop, and now I'm gonna insert into the very next one and pull up that loop, okay? So, and then I'm gonna pull through, and that's just gonna give us a little bit of a smoother transition as we go up the side of that handle. And so it gets rid of that sharp kind of corner it creates. Now, this is where we're going up the side or the bottom side of that initial chain. And these are the back bumps. So this is where I'm actually just going to change my hook and I'm gonna bring back my four and a half millimeter hook, which is what helps me get into tighter spots. And in fact, when I was going through the initial stitches here of the chain, this is the hook size I used because I like the fact that it's got a little bit of a pointier tip there and it just helps ease things through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find those bumps. So this one is right here and I'm just gonna insert and single crochet. Now you wanna be careful because it is a smaller hook. It doesn't mean you want your stitches to be tighter, which is the risk you run of using this. So I purposely, as I pull through, I do try to keep them looser so that when I bring back my regular hook, I can still fit it into the stitches nicely. And so then I just go and I find the next little bump. So you can see how these bumps are sitting there. So really it's just one loop that you're working into. And so the next stitch, the bump is right there. And it doesn't have to be perfect. As long as it looks fairly uniform, you're okay. See how I'm stretching that up a little bit? And then single crochet and I'm keeping it nice and relaxed. And then the next bump, these first few might be a little funky to see Okay, right there. So it looks like it's pushed forward, but it's actually on top. So I pull that through, keeping it a little bit loose, and then pull through. And you wanna be careful, you don't want it to be too loose. Like that one looks a little bit too loose to me. So I'm just gonna pull it a bit, and pull through, and single crochet. And then the next bump is right there. And this is basically what you're gonna do all the way around the underside of the handle, okay? And it should take you back to the other end where we began. So I'm just doing a few here so you can see. So now, see working into those back bumps, it just closes what would have been that gap in the center, believe it or not. So I really like that. So that's what you're gonna do all along the underside of your strap. And by the time you get to here, you're gonna decrease these last three stitches together. So that's why I started in this stitch. So once you get to here, you're gonna decrease one, two, and three together, and then you're gonna slip stitch to join, okay? So go ahead and do that. This is row number one of the un underside or the inside of your handle. Okay, so I've come back around, and now this stitch has already been worked, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slip stitch to join, and you guys will not believe this, but look at what's left of this yarn. So I definitely am not gonna have enough to do my second round, but I do have enough to get you started, and then I'm gonna have to run out and just, because I absolutely have now gone through all of my cotton yarn, so, I need to stock up because I do have a few other projects coming up in our Home Sweet Home series that will use some cotton yarn. But anyway, so you can see here that now it's starting to get nice and wide here. And again, that center is just beautifully snug. I love that. And so I'll get you started on the final round. So there will be no decreases at all. We're just doing a finishing round just to give this strap just a little bit of extra width 
So again, once I've slip stitched to join, I will chain one, go back into that same stitch and single crochet. And then, nice and easy now, just one single crochet into each and every single stitch and you are just about done your laundry bag. And then I will come back and we'll just kind of take you through quickly the absolute last finishing round on the inside and outside of your handles. Oops, I forgot to mention one thing is we are still gonna do that little decrease in the corner. So I just had enough yarn to get me there. So it's one single crochet into each stitch and we're still gonna do that decrease three together to create that curve. See how that previous row or round gave us that curve? We're gonna do the same thing. So I just wanted to remind you. So you insert into the first one just before you hit that bend, then the second one, and then the third one. And you pull through and see how it just makes a beautiful transition. And then you continue along doing a single crochet and I have just a little bit of yarn here that I can do a few of these stitches so you can see whoop, getting right to the end there so you can see that now it's just has a little bit more in the width and there is that beautiful shaping there isn't that great love it okay you guys are going to finish your underside and then I need to get myself just a bit more yarn to do the finishing round with you guys Okay, so I've got some more yarn here. It looks similar to this one, but it's not quite the same because I'm gonna be using it on another project you're gonna be seeing in a little bit. All right, so I have now completed round number two on the inside. So you can see it now gives us a little bit of, of width in our strap. You could go a third round if you wanted to, but I'm pretty happy with how it is. So now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the final round on the inside using slip stitches. And this I feel just helps to give it a little bit of strength. So once you've completed round number two, I've slip stitched to join here. And so I'm gonna chain one, just to give me a little bit of breathing room here. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into every single stitch and I'm just going to slip stitch just like that. And like I said, it'll just give it a little bit more structure. And that's it. This is the final touch of your bag. So you can see now it's just going to make it a little stronger. So you're going to go ahead and do that on the inside of your strap. Then you can slip stitch to join, snip your yarn, and the strap is complete. You're then going to go and do your second strap exactly like we did this one. Now I've already done mine here with the slip stitches and everything already done. So you're gonna do your two handles. Once you're done the two handles, the very last thing to do is now to go along the outer edge with the slip stitches. Again, just to give it some strength. So you can start anywhere you like, but I'll just use this as an example here. So once you've done your handles, you're now going to go along the outside of the handle. So currently we're working on the inside of the handle. The very last thing you'll do is find a spot anywhere, join your yarn, and you're going to slip stitch all the way around the outside edge. So when you come to the handle, you're now slip stitching on the outside of the handle. And you're gonna do that all the way around and then slip stitch to join and snip your yarn. Your bag will be complete and it will have a nice fortified edge on the outside. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna leave you guys to finish your bag. And in just a few moments, I will be back to show you the final reveal of my extra large laundry bag. Look at how gorgeous that strap came out. So. This is where the new yarn came in, but it really blends in so beautifully. And I just love it. So here is the bag in its entirety. So it's a huge, nice size here. And here it is, the whole thing. Now what I'm gonna do, just to kind of show you guys, look at that nice wide opening. I'm gonna put in a few towels here just to kind of give you the perspective of just how much you can fit in this bag. So I grabbed all the clean towels that I have anyway, 
and uh, I'm just trying to show you guys. So this, the bottom of the bag, the length is this way. So you can see I stacked two bath towels in here. There's still tons of room. And I'm just going to keep filling this until, well, until I run out of towels. So here's three, four, five, and I have a sixth one. And if I had more towels, I would place it in here. Look at how spacious this is, right? Still tons of room. And look at that. Still so much you can fit in here. You can fit um, bed linens, a comforter easily, uh, tons and tons of room here. You could, you know, as I've said before, you can use this as a beach bag as well. So tons and tons of room in here. Like I said before, you can use this as a beach bag as well. And um, I love the fact that, especially for those of you that don't have in-home laundry, like if you live in an apartment or something like that, um, years ago, I lived in an apartment where I had to go down the street to the laundromat. And I would have loved to have a bag like this because it slings over your shoulder nice and easily. And you can throw this in the wash with your clothes. So if you've got the dirty clothes in here, you throw this in with the dirty clothes and everything comes out nice and clean. And then you can put it back inside a nice clean laundry bag. So what do you guys think? Is this not the best crochet project to have around your house? I love it. So now I've got two of these. I've got this one and the original one I did, I believe it was 2019. And so I'm super happy with it. I think this will make an awesome gift, a housewarming gift, or um, someone that's going away to college or something like that. I just think you can't go wrong with this very useful, awesome crochet gift. Now, if you have any questions as always, please do feel free to leave them for me in the comment box down below. And I know a lot of you do like to email me directly, so feel free to do that at info at crochetcrafty.com. And don't forget, come visit me on the website, crochetcrafty.com. I've got tons of fabulous crochet tools like templates and charts, sizing charts, as well as free patterns. We've got tons of free patterns on the website, as well as my Etsy shop that has other patterns if you'd like to purchase those to support the channel. And don't forget, come say hi to me. I'm on Facebook and Instagram, mostly on Instagram, but also on Facebook at the Stitch Session. So make sure to tag me anytime you create any of my designs. So that's it, that's all. That is it for March's Home Sweet Home Crochet Project. I hope you guys have an amazing day. As always, happy crochet. Make sure you take really good care of yourselves and uh, I will see you guys in next week's session. Bye-bye.